Hi everyone, today we're going to paint a full rose study, so the stem, the petals, everything. Now, if you haven't yet seen my top five tips in painting a watercolour rose, which you can find up here, go and have a watch of that, and that talks you through all the basics of the actual flower of the rose itself. And once you've watched that, come back to me here and we'll get started. Okay, so I'm going to start off by giving myself a bit of a guide. Um, roses grow with stems that kind of curve off from each other. So I'm going to just, there we go. So I'm going to have my rose kind of here. And we have sort of a little leaf and maybe a little bud that comes off like that. Okay, now, if you haven't already watched the how to paint an actual rose, go and have a look at that because that is a really handy guideline and it means that I can just launch into painting that rose right here, right now. So I've got a bit of permanent rose already in the palette here and it's sort of got a slightly darker, intense tone with it also a little bit of a hair, so we'll just remove that. It's got a slightly crimson feel because I added in a little bit of this crimson too. And I quite like that. So I have got a large brush. I've got a size six brush and I'm just going to paint the rose head first. So if you've already watched the five top tips, you will know that we start off with a little bundle of apostrophes and then from there I'm going to paint with using a far more diluted set of slightly waggly C curves to build up a lovely rose and I will also drop in little bits more of pink here and there but on the whole and my rose here that I'm painting, I want to give that sense that it's sort of fading out to the edges. Now one thing I'm doing here that I didn't do in the five top tips is I'm doing a rose that's slightly off centre. It's sort of on a three quarter angle. You can see the centre there, it's moving about, the centre there I've sort of built up curves more on this side rather than just completely around and that gives the impression that this rose is sort of poking off in that direction. Okay I'm really happy with that but what I'm just going to do now is I'm going to dab in a little bit more colour in the middle and just really intensify that. So that was rather fast but remember I've got a whole video dedicated to exactly how you do that. So I highly recommend that you go and have a little watch of that. So now we're gonna have a look at how we construct the rest of the painting. Now the rose stem has a lot of color that, uh, well a lot of the pink crimsony color that's in the petals actually running through the stem. Um, so first off we're gonna add in are sort of a nice wet sap green, which I've got here, quite a dilute one. I've also got a sort of more yellowy one here. And I'm gonna begin by just painting in, I'm gonna just roll up my sleeves here um, because always got the slight fear that I'm gonna stick my hand in my painting. And I'm just going to do some simple stems, sort of running along the curves that I've already painted in. So that main stem down here is then going to have a little branch coming off it there and a branch coming off it there and that is going to sort of have the little branch that has the rose on it. Now at each sort of junction, what I want to give the impression of is that the branch starts off nice and thick 
and then sort of thins out. So instead of worrying about sort of painting everything sort of the right size first, what I do is I start off fairly slim with everything and then I build it up. So it looks like each time I've just done a little sort of extra bit, there's a little bit more coming out the edge. And I'm just getting a little bit more slightly concentrated sap green and just popping that in at each branch. Now I mentioned that we'd get a bit of, of the rose colour coming up the stem. So whilst it's all still wet, see I just dropped that in. Just a hint of it. It's little details like that that really make all the difference to making a, uh, a convincing botanical study when you are still painting in a fairly loose style like this. So it's done, that's just a case of actually looking at uh, the real thing if you've got it. It's, I mean, how lovely to have a real rose in front of you whilst you're painting. Now the last thing is at each little junction there's often a little sepal. So that's just a little sort of fairly dilute sap green C curve. Nice. And this is all with my size 2 brush, which is working very nicely for me. I've become um, a big fan of the size 2 brush recently. I used to sort of forget about it and just sort of focus in on my really, really tiny weeny brushes. Okay, so now for we're going to do a little bud here. I've got a slightly greener, yellowy mix, and I'm just doing a little sort of bell shape on the end of that stem. If we want, we can just run it along there to blend it up a little bit. And then, because I like to do, or I like to use the blend of the colors, whilst it's still wet, I'm gonna get some pink on a fairly clean brush, and I'm going to paint a little sort of S curve either side. And then with a clean brush, I'm just going to fill that in with a single stroke. I'm not going to go to town there. I don't want too much to happen because I want that to just blend of its own accord. And we're going to leave that to dry. Now, time to look at some leaves. I'm going to use some sap green, but I also want to get a bit of sort of moodiness in with these leaves. So I'll get a little bit of Mars black. quite diluted and I'm just going to drop that in to my sap green there. Oh, another little bit of fluff on my palette. Uh, always seems to be, I can't blame our dog Crumble every single time, but he's definitely got a hand in it. And just a little bit of French ultramarine to give it a slightly more zingy green feel and not just a flat dull green that a bit of Mars black can bring. A bit more sap green. I'm happy with that colour. Okay, so on a rose, the leaves sort of flare out often at, um, well, they, they flare out at parallel points. So what I'm doing is I'm just drawing some lines that are going to be the central line of my leaf. This branch is going to naturally turn into a leaf itself. And here we're going to have some as well. I think we'll have we'll have a few on this one and then up here as well. Lovely. Okay. And now we are going to have a go at painting these. Now this goes right back to the uh, simple initial leaf tutorials I used to do with you guys in the really, really early days of flowers and foliage. So if, if you can't remember or haven't seen those, go back and have a watch. Um, so we're going to use the large brush, size six, and I'm going to do some mirrored S and C curves to create the basis of these leaves. Now, rose leaves are lovely and broad. 
They're also I'm just going to drop in a tiny bit more of darkness in the base there. They're also a little bit serrated. So just with the point of the leaf, the point of the leaf point of the brush, I'm going to just create a few more serrated edges, but just quite subtle ones. I don't want them to be over the top. And I'm also just going to take that colour and draw it down in. Okay, let's keep going with the leaves. I quite like these leaves to be a little bit sort of characterful and a little bit messy. So I really squish the leaf down, the brush down, and I get these lovely, slightly angular sort of elements to the leaves, but I'm really happy with those. And then just getting a few of the serrated edges. Really happy with those. And we're gonna let those dry and then we'll be adding more detail in. Okay, so let's go up to the top. Sometimes we don't have quite enough colour on the brush. Lovely. And I'm leaving a tiny bit of unpainted space each time down the middle of that leaf to help with the detail. A little bit of darkness just dropped in at the base whilst it's nice and wet. And a little bit of, oh, it's a bit much. <laughs> A little bit of serration and all these little delicate little detail bits are still done very successfully with the large brush and I'm just going to blend that down into the stem. I wanted to see how those two leaves kind of sat before I painted the one I'm going to have at the top because there's a chance that we might not see, there we go, we might not see the whole of that top leaf. Really nice, okay, now we're just gonna do the leaves down here. So I'm just gonna mix myself up a little bit more of that color because I felt like it was starting to wane a little bit. If you can get your colors all mixed up beforehand, you'll be very grateful to your past self. Sometimes you just use so much on, a, on a something like a big wet leaf shape. There we go, that's nice. Okay, so let's go down here. And this time I'm gonna start with the one up here. And then I know, there we go. It doesn't matter if there's a little bit of touching little bit of that darkness smooth it up and try and get a little bit of serration it's funny that the rose holds so much reverence with a lot of um, sort of loose watercolor painting it's the one that everybody's keen to learn. And um, what's quite nice is if you just try and approach it as you would any other flower, whether it was a wild flower, a little weed, you'll have a much better time of it because I think if you build it up too much, well, you'll, you'll lose your nerve a bit, I think. So it's good to just keep calm and enjoy it. That's the most important thing. Okay, so we are nearly there with these first layer loose washes and that's looking really nice. So we just need to wait for all of this to dry and then we can add in some detail and some shadow. This is nice and dry now. Let's do the little finger test to check. So let's get on with some detail. 
I'm going to use my size to brush once more and let's look at the bud first. So the bud needs some sepals. We've got our yellowy green. I think really we need to add in some more sap green into this yellow, especially to make sure that it can actually show up because when we layer with watercolour, we've got a quite a nice light bud there already, but we need to make sure this green can show up over the top. So I'm going to paint in some nice long C curves, or the S curves, I suppose. I, I like to do three when I'm doing sepals. And then I'm going to just blend that up into the bud top to make it all look like it belongs together. Just give a tiny dab of sap green at the base of that. That looks lovely. Now the next thing is to give the leaves a little bit of detail. Um, I hate giving <laughs> leaves detail because um, it, it, it just reminds me of when I was little and you sort of start painting and drawing a, a nice leaf or flower and then the moment you start to put the lines up the middle it just suddenly looks rubbish but do not fear it doesn't have to look rubbish at all. So what I've got is I've mixed a slightly more concentrated version of French Ultramarine and Sap Green. Size 2 brush, all I'm going to do is use the vague pencil lines that we had in the first place to just give myself a little bit of definition. It doesn't have to be three lines each time, but then what I do also is I bring some of that down into the stem. And the other reason that works nicely is because we did drop in a little bit of that French ultramarine into the leaf in the first place when it was blending. And this is just how I like to do them. Um, I'm sure if you were rather into leaf detail you could go far more in with this, but it's a personal preference, isn't it? And this is how I like to do things, because I like to give an essence of detail that has sort of got one mind in accuracy, but also doing a fully accurate botanical study would be an awfully long YouTube video. So this is the style that I like. And this is new botanical painting in its most true form. It's when I like to capture the essence of a piece. I'm just adding a little bit more there. Yeah, I like to capture the essence of a piece, but not say that I'm a, a true botanical artist because that is a, a scientific study all in itself. Okay, so I just sort of drew down some of that navy sort of green colour and I'm going to add a little bit of it to our little sepals and that means I can just make that one stand out a little bit more. Okay, lovely. There's another one up here, isn't there? Fantastic. Now we need some sepals on our actual rose. So go back to my slightly, uh, slightly, uh, slightly yellower green. Now let's picture that we've got the central pencil line here. I imagine the base of the rose is about there. So the sepals, we're not going to see much, but we might see a little bit. That's looking nice but we could just do a little bit more detail, I fancy, and a little bit more detail on the rows. So I'm going to start first by giving the stem a little bit more depth just by using that nice shadowy colour we already had. 
I'm then going to take my size 2 tenths brush, get it a little bit wet and get a slightly more concentrated mixture of this dark sort of green shadow mix we've got here and just add in just a little bit of, sort of detail coming up the stems. course this one was sort of sitting underneath the rose so it needs a little bit more darkness anyway. And by slowly building up all these sort of seemingly loose layers we've actually ended up with a very detailed study of this rose. And a little bit more just on the underside of that bud coming down in really nice. Now you could leave it like that. The only thing I'd like to do is maybe just do a tiny bit more detail on this rose. Now the loose watercolour rose is lovely like that but if you really are keen on sort of pushing it a little bit further you can go back in and this is this is quite a risk I will say but just lightly sort of add a few more brush strokes with a slightly more concentrated version of your initial colour just to give it a little bit more depth and detail. But as I say, have a little practice first, just sort of leaving it as it is first and then you can give it a little go. And just a little bit of real darkness right in the middle. And it's just coming down there. And there we go. And there you go, a really lovely botanical rose and you've painted it. So if you've enjoyed that, um, obviously I'd love you to like, comment and subscribe, but I also wanted to remind you that I do have my lovely book, New Botanical Painting, which is all about flowers and foliage. And there is another rose in here, there's all sorts of flowers, and at the back there's also a lovely range of projects, which are all about putting those flower paintings that you've learnt and putting them all together into arrangements and wreaths and lovely things. I just want to tell you about that because there are so many different ways to learn. Some people love to see it live on a video demonstrated, and some people like to see broken down step-by-step -step diagrams in books. So if you would love to get yourself a copy, or a Kindle version as well, then the link is in the episode notes below. And until next time, happy painting.